All right, guys, welcome to Facebook lead ads training. So as promised, I'm going to be walking you through the process of building a Facebook lead ads, and we'll look at a number of different options that you've got available to you. All right, so what I want you to start off, we're going to start off here in Facebook ads manager. So uh, facebook.com slash ad slash manager, or just type in facebook.com slash ads manager up here, and it will default. It'll take you there to where you need to go. All right, so we're just going to start off at the campaign level. This is your highest level of organization here. Always when you start your advertising campaigns, you're going to start off by setting your objective at the campaign level. And lead generation is its own unique space due to these forms. All right, so you can't drive website clicks, app installs, any of these other options here, and have access to the lead forms. So select your lead generation, and then it'll take you over to the ad set level. Now. For those of you familiar with Facebook advertising, your ad set level is where you develop all your targeting. So you have two different options when you get down to your ad set level. All right, You can either build your targeting, build your own audience, or you can use a custom defined audience that you've already built. Now custom audiences are built off of Facebook pixels. Uh, we've been through that before. All right, and So you'll have access to any audiences that you built here. The way that I want you to look at this, and so right up at the top, we're going to have to select your page. So I've got my, we're going to be using my digital wingman page today. I've accepted Facebook lead ads terms for this pages, or terms for this page. So all is good there. It's really just a quick read. You'll be able to get set up. But now you can get down to your audience where you can start your targeting. All right, and this is where you have two options. Where right? I said you've got your custom audiences, or you can build your targeting matrix yourself. Now with Facebook lead ads, I want you to concentrate on two areas. Either use a Facebook lead ad for cold traffic alright and cold traffic these again these are the people that do not know who you are so you'll be able to set set your uh, set your parameters wide and cast a wide net because you want a large audience here of somewhere between 500,000 and 1 million people alright and that's gonna be uh, your that'll be your potential reach or your, your potential reach is where you want to keep that between 500,000 and a million so keep an eye on that over here on your right hand side all right, so you can set your locations, uh, people who lived in this location, recently in this location. Got all the standard options here. Set your age, your gender, your languages. So we'll just keep it at all right now. We're going to keep our age wide open. Actually, we're going to raise this up a little. Target people who are out of college, just for argument's sake. All right, and you can start to build in your targeting matrix down here. The only time I want you to use a custom defined audience with Facebook lead ads. All right, is if you've all if this is your follow-up campaign, if this is your remarketing campaign. So let's say for instance we have we're running a, a standard Facebook ad driving people to a landing page that requires some sort of action. All right, you can use Facebook lead ads to follow up on this initial visit just as long as you've set your custom audience up to, to record that. All right, and the way that I would do it, and this is what I will recommend that you do, is if you are looking for a specific action once they get on that page. All right, you need to build your custom audience to record people who landed on that sales page and then completed the action. All right, that's going to show you the people that completed the action that you wanted or you wanted them to take. All right, and you can do that the opposite way as well. You can say people that landed on your uh, on your sales page but did not reach the landing page or probably did not reach the confirmation page or the thank you page. Those people, they failed to take the action. These are the ones you want to follow up with. So use this as an opportunity with Facebook lead ads to gather more information on exactly what they're looking for. All right, so we're going to walk down the page here. So we're going to pretend we're going to cold traffic. So I'm going to leave my um, targeting open, wide open in the United States. I'm targeting quite a bit of people here. So let's bring that down just a little bit, 76 million. Uh, let's all right. We're gonna bring down our targeting. Just make sure we're looking at a cold targeting segment here. So, 32 million people. Still a pretty wide range. I'm just gonna close this down a little. See what we can get. For argument's sake, we'll say we're there. You can add connection types. People that exclude people who like your page. This is a good option to have in case you don't want to argue or pardon me, you don't want to advertise to people who are already members of your audience. All right, and we're going to look for people who are, let's see, people who make Facebook payments. All right, because I'm targeting, I'm targeting small business owners, people who are admins of their own pages and run their own marketing. All right, so I'm going to do set my behaviors there, and I'm going to leave them again. I'm going to go back here and open up my targeting since you saw my reach down here. There we go, six hundred eighty thousand. This is a good cold targeting ad. 
All right, so now we can scroll down. You can save your audience if you really do want to start building these out and you want to create different sets. But for our purposes, we're just going to move through this lead ad segment. All right, your placements, this is where it's going to show up, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, mobile, you name it. All right, when you're using your lead ads, leave this as automatic. All right, and you'll notice our, I can come down to edit placements and I can tell it where I want it to go. And you'll notice it's going to tell me this is these other place, placements and advanced locations are ineligible. All right, so just leave it as automatic right now, and that's just going to be for these lead ads. All right, now you can come down to your budget. To the best of my knowledge, there is no minimum daily budget, but your budget is going to affect your reach. So as you can see, I'm going to come down to daily budget, and I'm going to say, so with $20 right here, if you come down here to the right-hand side on estimated daily reach with $20, I can expect to see 930 to 2,500 people on Facebook. All right, if I increase that to $30, all right, you can see my reach moves up. All right, so the more Facebook is a pay-to-play system. So set your daily budget based on what you know you can spend to bring in a lead. All right, so you can run your ads continuously starting today, or you can set on a start and end date. If you are uh, managing this for a specific brand, it might be in your best options to run on a start and end date. That way you've got a little bit more control. All right, so let's, I'm going to make sure you saw what happened there. All right, so I clicked under budget and schedule. You can come down here to optimize for delivery. Leave optimize for delivery as leads. This is the recommended setup just for this specific campaign. All right, and pardon me, Facebook will automatically work to give you the best bid. All right, and this is based off of their massive amounts of data and what they can tell based in, uh, based in the areas that you're advertising, what the best options are going to be. You can also come down here to add scheduling. All right, and let's see, add scheduling only works on lifetime budget. So this is an interesting setup here. Um, lifetime budgets, you can always set a daily budget. Lifetime budget helps you keep track of how much you're going to spend. But what I recommend is overshoot on the end date. So give this an open end date. All right, that way Facebook, because if you, right now we've got it set November 29 to December 29, Facebook is going to tell me, or pardon me, is going to interpret this as I have $350 to spend in this time period, and they're going to do their best to make sure you do actually spend all that money. All right, so my recommendations, if you don't want Facebook to automatically start to optimize things for you, leave a little more time in your end date just to make sure that they don't do that. All right, so we've gone ahead and selected lifetime budget so we can scroll down all right and we can run our specific schedule in here since we're running to cold traffic and if you are advertising in multiple countries multiple time zones you might want to leave this wide open until you start to gather some data so we're going to leave that as run on all times all right and delivery type all right this is where facebook starts to automatically recommend so we leave ours at standard but accelerated is where you find yourself if you have a tight deadline you'd want to make sure you get as many impressions as possible you can accelerate this and this only works with a manual bid all right, so we're going to close out those options and once you've done setting your targeting you can come down here and you can set up your ad set name so once you start to build out these robust campaigns you'll have multiple ad sets and multiple ad groups underneath those so we're going to set that up and continue and you'll notice as you move down these screens all of these sections here on the right hand side are going to check off to make sure that you've actually got them completed so if you see anything that's missing here chances are good it's not going to let you progress now now we've got our targeting set up now we can actually move into the actual formatting of these ads and you have four different setups that you're allowed. You've got your carousel ads, which are two to 10 scrolling images where you can move through the images yourself manually. Single images and Facebook will give you up to six different images that you can test, no extra charge. So it's a good option to start with. Single video and slideshow. Now slideshow and carousel ads sound a lot like one another. The only difference is the carousel ad is a manual motion. So your users are going to have to actively scroll through this. All right, and this is going to work for Instagram too, just not in these lead ads. All right, the slideshow is automatically going to move through. For our purposes, we're just going to use the single image. I'm going to scroll down here, and you can see where you just basically add your specific images here. Recommended image size 
It's 1200 by 628, and I recommend that you do stick to this. All right, this is going to give you as much space on that ad as possible. So once you set your images in this space, and we're going to go ahead, and we've got multiple images. I've got one image here. We're just going to use my, uh, use my Facebook cover photo for argument's sake. And you come down here and start building out your text, and you have multiple spaces where you can create, uh, create text in here. All right, your headline, and this is going to show up here at this section. So your headline will actually give you 25 characters. It's usually about five to six words. I recommend you be brief and to the point. All right, so we're going to see, be your own marketing guru. And all of this text will update over here on this side. So you'll be able to see exactly what you're looking at, exactly what you're creating. It's for an agency, save time and money by running your own marketing, no muss, no fuss. And I might date, date myself by using the term, the phrase, no muss, no fuss, but we're going to get beyond that. All right, and you can select your call to action button as well. And I recommend that you keep your call to action consistent with what you want them to do. So apply now, download, get quote, all these different options here. You also have space in here for an extra news feed description. So when this shows up on a mobile desktop, or probably on a desktop news feed, You'll have more content in there, and I recommend you set your display link for your, um, pardon me, for your home page. That's just going to be there. Uh, you can set the link to go anywhere you want, but it'll show up down here on this side to show the users exactly where they're going. All right, the next option down here you have is pixel tracking, and do track your conversions with your Facebook pixel, because what this is going to allow Facebook to do is optimize for you. It's going to allow them to, down the line, to gather enough information to make sure that they can optimize these campaigns for you. Otherwise, they're going to end up using lots and lots of big data. So uh, the more information you can give Facebook about the users you're looking for, the better off you're going to be. All right, and then now you can get down here and you can actually build out your lead form. And this is where it gets a little bit, you can get a little more creative and you can save specific forms down here. Now I've already got one created here, but I'm going to walk you through the process. We're going to create a brand new form. We're going to call this test form one. You can leave the advanced options down here and do include the organic leads. We're going to get rid of this. All right, and we'll save our draft. All right, now that we've saved our draft, we can start to move forward here. All right, and they're going to allow you to add a context card. And a context card, all right, this is different than the ad that shows. It's meant to be a larger bit of information for them. So if you can't fit all your information in the ad text itself, I don't recommend you try and cram all that information in there. Use this as an opportunity to add more detail and add your context card down here. All right, you'll be able to build another image into it. It'll contain your, uh, your profile picture and your headline text as well. And so you could choose your layout, bullet, paragraph. I use bullet because it allows me to add up to six different, or pardon me, five different options in here. Test one, test two, test three, test four, and test five. And this allows you to build out more information about your specific product. And I want you to be very specific with them. All right, so we're gonna go next. All right, and now we can start to pick out our information. This is where you have a lot of options here. Basics are going to be full name and email if you want. Uh, get rid of full name and set first name and last name, and this information can automatically be updated. All right, you, it'll be a one-click option for these people where they can, uh, this information will automatically be filled out in the form itself. All right, so for you mobile users, this is going to be a lot quicker and easier for them, and that's your job here is to make this very simple. You can also come down here and add a question. You can add up to three specific questions within this setup. All right, and you can build answers in here. So what do you hate about marketing? All right, too confusing. And just add a, uh, or pardon me, hit the tab button to move over. And you can add more answers to this. So that'll give them that drop down menu that they need to use. All right, so I'm going to get out of this. All right, and you'll hit next and it'll create your, uh, Let's see, create your form field as well as your disclaimer and your privacy policy. Now the privacy policy is Facebook's default unless you have one that you want to add yourself. All right, for the most part, all you're gonna really need to do, this link text will go to your, or link text and URL will go to your privacy policy. All right, so we're just gonna move forward. 
and then you can enter the form or pardon me the website that you want to go to and you are basically ready to run at that point so be precise with the questions that you use and just make it easy for your users to do so and you're good to go